Yeah. I'm a completely different person. Um, about eight years ago, actually nine now. So what happened was, okay, I'll start at the beginning. It was the ninth and a half month of my pregnancy. I really, I was ready to give birth to this baby. And, and the doctor told me, you know, we're gonna have to do this now. Like it, it's getting late, this, this child has to come out. And I remember the night before, before it actually happened, I felt this, this, this feeling of trepidation in my stomach, really like a, a not good feeling. My husband and I, we have this wonderful tradition of eating Chinese food before I go into labor, don't ask. Uh, you know, when we know we're, I don't know, it's our way of celebrating and I couldn't eat a thing. It just tasted like straw. And when I went to say goodnight to my children, I remember it felt like I was saying goodbye. It was so, so scary, you know, your mouth gets dry and something is off, but you just can't put your word to it. Uh, so what happened next is I went to the hospital. Things, you know, seemed to be okay. I slept that night and in the morning when I woke up, that's when things went absolutely crazy. The pain was like nothing I ever felt before. And I, I just, I didn't even know what to do with myself. And at that moment, I blacked out. It was like I was just saying goodbye. I remember that this thing that had been so painful just a minute before, it was, it was like gone. And all I felt was sweet black and voices in the distance taking care of me. And I was ready to say goodbye. That's pretty much the last thing I remembered before I woke up in the ICU a few days later. It turned out that what happened was that I had AFE, which is when the amniotic fluid sac ruptures and my entire body was filled with toxins. After that, it had a secondary effect of causing DIC. Now my father's a doctor, so when my husband called him and told him that I had AFE, he said, ask them if, it's D if she has DIC. DIC doctors say stands for death is coming because every single platelet in my body died, gone. There was no way for me to stop bleeding. There was no way for me to stay alive. They didn't know what to do. They gave me transfusion after transfusion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have to count each one of them because I have in my heart and something that I've started to do is to give back those pints of blood. When my iron can handle it, I just get in there and, you know, and give back all that blood and nothing was helping, and platelet transfusions, and finally they stabilized me. And let me just tell you about AFE, it is not simple. 80% of the people who have AFE, they die right away. The body simply can't handle it. And of the 20% that survive, 50% of those are in a vegetative state. As a matter of fact, after this happened to me, I did hear of someone in our community who experienced what I experienced and is, is in a vegetative state. She's not available to take care of her children. Well, so many miracles happen that I'll, I'll just have to tell you about another time. But the point that I want to say today is that when I woke up in the ICU, I had tubes all over, tubes around my hand, tubes down my throat, just, just kind of laying there. And my husband came in and he told me what happened. And I couldn't believe it. And then there was some kind of emergency and he had to leave. And I was in the room by myself. And I remember this thought, like it's, like it's happening right now. And I was thinking, Hashem, God, you love me? You love me, you love me. And it was as if like an explosion of awareness happened to me. Now I grew up religious. I, I know this, I used to say this every day to love Hashem your God, that Hashem is full of love for you, but I didn't feel it. I didn't know it in my heart. I didn't know the tiniest bit about love. In that ICU room, surrounded by angels, I literally felt lifted by the prayers of the people who prayed for me, and I was swimming in God's love. And suddenly, I understood that there was nothing that I could do to deserve this amount of love and there was nothing that I could do to, 
to not have this amount of love. Like it, it's just, it's just who God is to us. We are the expression of His unconditional love. And when I stepped out of that hospital, when I finally recovered, and in the months following, I was different. Everything was different. The trees were different. People were different. I used to be wrapped up in complexities and insecurities. Are they my friend or are they my acquaintance? How do I act with them? And suddenly I saw they're a neshama, they're a soul. They're someone that God loves too. We are all here simply through Hashem's love. I cannot tell you how much it changed me. I probably will tell you, you know, as we go on how much it changed me, but I'll tell you this. Being lifted and buoyed by Hashem's love in everything I do has changed my Judaism. It's changed my inner world where my head is. It's changed my self-love. It's changed my relationships. Every single little bit of Torah that I learn is completely different when it's through the filter of Hashem's love, which is the true filter. That's it. How I teach and train my children is different. And my message to people always comes through the lens of God's love, through the lens of Hashem's love. Whether I'm teaching women about self-love and empowerment and boundaries and self-acceptance, or I'm teaching people about Judaism and Shabbos, and holidays and mitzvot it's all different now I don't even know what to tell you it's just it's different because it's through the understanding that Hashem loves you you're precious you're adorable you're delightful and that's what I got for you that's that's my message that is that is my message I might teach about I do teach about a whole host of other things but always underneath it is going to be this one message 